welcome everyone to our solar photovoltaics course. To recapitulate whatever we have learnt so far, we started with first generation solar cell that is single crystal silicon solar cell. Then we have talked about second generation solar cell or thin film solar cell. And from last two lectures, we have started talking about third generation solar cell. Now we mentioned that in third generation solar cell, there are different varieties of solar cell like disensitized solar cell, organic photovoltaics and then perovskite solar cells etc. Out of that disensitized solar cell was for a quite a long time and in last two classes we have learned what is the working principle or working mechanism behind a disensitized solar cell devices. We also learned how to fabricate the disensitized solar cell. We found that it is quite easy to make a disensitized solar cell. In today's lecture, we will learn about some other components of this DSSC device, for example, sensitizers and also the redox couple. Some of the advantage like which uh, makes this DSSC technology very, very popular is like chemical versatility and facile synthetic approach to diverse molecular structures. So, uh, we can take different kind of sensitizers or different kind of dye molecule to fabricate this DSSC device. Similarly, the fabrication method is very facile and you can make it in a simple solution based method. And from the last class demonstration, we have seen that even an undergraduate student with a minimum facility can make a DSSC device in the lab. Then the second point is that the energetic and structural tunability. So, depending upon in which region of the electromagnetic spectrum we like our dye to absorb the sunlight we can make their band gap accordingly and we can choose the material accordingly. So, we have a freedom on the choice of the material according to their band gap and according to their structural properties. The third important point is the low cost. Yeah, so obviously, this DSSC device has a cost which is much lower than the first generation and second generation technology. And the last but not the least point is that the environmental friendliness. So, since we are using organic materials to fabricate this kind of devices, for example, you have seen that we have are using titanium dioxide or TiO2 to make this disensitized solar cell. But where we use this TiO2? We use in our everyday life. In making the toothpaste also we use TiO2. In the paint in our house that is also made from TiO2. It is also used as a good antibacterial agent. So, these products are biocompatible and they are environmental friendly. So, this kind of solar cell you can call it as a green approach of fabricating solar cells. Next, what are the components of the solar cells? So, we learned that there are 5 different components in a DSSC device. A conductive mechanical support, a semiconductor film, a sensitizer, a redox couple electrolyte and a counter electrode. So, there are 5 different components there in these devices. First was a conductive mechanical support. If you remember what we have used in the last class, indium tin oxide coated glass substrate or ITO glass substrate. The second it semiconductor film, what we have used as a semiconductor film? Titanium dioxide. So, we put a layer of titanium dioxide on top of the ITO substrate that is a semiconductor film. Third is a sensitizers, sensitizers or dye molecule. The role of the dye molecule is to absorb the sunlight and we dip the photo anode, the titanium dioxide anode in a sensitizer solution. In the last class, we have dipped it in the porphyrin solution and we used porphyrin as a sensitizer. And we also mentioned that we can choose even some laser dye or any other sensitizer molecule to make this device. So, the sensitizer molecule or dye molecule go inside the pores of the semiconductors and they get absorbed on the semiconductor surface. Now, they are ready to absorb the sunlight. So, they will absorb the sunlight and what will happen to them? So, the electron will be excited from the valence band to the conduction band of the dye or it will go from the ground state to the excited state of the dye. Now, electron cannot stay in the excited state for a long. So, they will inject back where they will inject? They will inject to the conduction band of the titanium dioxide. So, that is why it is very important the energy level matching of the dye and the conductive titanium dioxide. So, that means the TiO2 excited state should be higher than the conduction band of the TiO2. 
the dye excited state should be higher than the conduction band of the TiO2. Then only the dye molecule in an excited state can inject electron to the conduction band of the titanium dioxide. Now, the fourth component is a redox couple. A redox couple is nothing but an electrolyte. In our particular case, we have used iodine trioiodide as an electrolyte. And if you remember what we have talked about the role of electrolyte to regenerate the whole process. So, that the dye comes back to the ground state and ready to absorb the light for the next cycle and the whole process cycles. And finally, to complete the device structure, we need a counter electrode. So, finally, we put the electrolyte and then on top there is a counter electrode. Now, we mentioned that as a counter electrode, we use the platinum counter electrode. Platinum also helps to catalyze this electron oxidation reduction process and also it acts like a metal counter electrode. Now, in many cases we replace this counter electrode by several other materials. For example, even we can take graphite like from pencil and we can put a layer on the glass substrate to make it a counter electrode. And there are several other examples like graphene, CNT like carbon nanotubes and some conducting polymer they have also used as this counter electrode. So, these are the 5 main components in a DSSC device. Fine tuning any 2 or 3 of these components have resulted in DSSC with increased efficiency. Now, it is worthwhile to mention that the efficiency in any device not only in DSSC, but for any kind of solar cell including silicon solar cell the efficiency is a multiplicative factor or the efficiency is an is not an additive function. It is a multiplicative function. What do we mean by that? There are so many parameters on which efficiency depends on. So, if the one of the parameters goes wrong, then the efficiency of the whole device goes bad. So, that is why when we fabricate these devices, we have to optimize each and every parameters, so that we get a maximum efficiency. Now, since our DSSC device has 5 different components, so we need to optimize all the 5 components simultaneously to get a good efficiency. So, optimizations of the 5 different components means that optimizations of the ITO substrate and optimization of the platinum counter electrode. Now, this substrate, this photo anode and photo cathode, they are already optimized. So, the next thing which we can optimize is the semiconductor oxide and the dye and the electrolyte. Now, people have used different choice of the material. For example, for semiconducting oxide, people have used titanium dioxide, they have used zinc oxide or any other metal oxide also. Not only the metal oxide in the bulk mesoporous form, they have used different nanostructures also for this metal oxides like titanium dioxides, nano rods, titanium dioxides, nano cube for example like that. And for sensitizers or dye molecules similarly, we can choose different kind of materials. Now, we have to keep some points in mind while choosing the sensitizer molecule. One important choice or one important parameters to pick up a sensitizer is its absorption property where does it absorbs and how much it absorbs. And of course, it should get absorbed on the TiO2 surface or the zinc oxide mesoporous surface. So, that is why its solubility is also an important parameter. Similarly, for an electrolyte, its energetic should match in such a way, so that it will be able to reduce back the dye in its ground state. So, today we will discuss in details about all these properties of the sensitizers and electrolyte, so that we can pick up the right sensitizers and the right electrolyte while fabricating the device. One of the important components of a DSSC is the photosensitizer. The main role of the sensitizer is the absorption of solar photons and the injection of the photo excited electrons into the conduction band of n type semiconductor. So, we have seen that if we consider this is the ground state of the dye which we write like S0 and if this is the excited state E stands for the excited state of the dye which we write as A star and if the electron jumps from the ground state to the excited state by the photon absorption. So, after some time what will happen? This electron has to comes back to some lower energy state and titanium dioxide has an energy level such that this is its conduction band and this is its valence band. And we know that the band gap is somewhat around 3.2 electron volt. Now, energetically the positions of the conduction band is matching with the excited state of the dye molecule. So, the electron can inject to the conduction band of the TiO2. So, the role of this dye molecule is twofold first to absorb the sunlight and second 
to inject the electron to the conduction band of the TiO2 or the semiconducting oxide. Now, electrons starting from the CB, it goes to the FTO substrate and comes back to the external circuit which participate in the electric conductions. So, dye is like crucial part in the DSST device. The molecular design of DSST dyes require careful consideration of optoelectronic properties such as absorption coefficient and band alignment as well as solid state properties such as dye aggregation, morphology and mode of assembly on the TiO2 photoanode. So, what does it means? So, as we just mentioned, first important parameter to consider a dye is its absorption. So, where does it absorb? Does it absorb in the UV region? Does it absorb in the visible region or in the near IR region? So, if we plot the electromagnetic spectrum, so you see that a dye which has an absorption spectrum which spans from the UV range, like let us say this is 400 nanometer and this is my 800 nanometer. So, this dye molecule has an absorption in the UV range, it has absorption in the visible range as well as it has some absorption in the near IR range. So, this dye molecule is ideal for our study because it has an absorption which spans all over the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, we know that the sunlight pretty much resembles like a black body spectrum which has maximum intensity in the near IR range. So, we will prefer a dye molecule which will have a good amount of absorption in the near IR or IR range. Now, most of the dye molecule which we use commercially like N3 or Z907 dye, they had a good amount of absorption in the visible range with some absorption in the near IR range. So, absorption is a very important parameter while choosing a dye molecule or sensitizer molecule. Second point is that the absorption coefficient and band alignment. So, the dye molecule has to be chosen in such a way it will be able to inject the electron to the conduction band of the N type semiconductor. So, the energetics of the semiconductor and sensitizers also has to be kept in mind. Third point is that some of the other properties like dye aggregation. So, some of the dye molecule has tends to show the aggregation. So, what will happen? They will accumulate in a particular area. So, if they accumulate in a particular area, only those regions will able to absorb the light. So, the rest of the TiO2 area will not be able to absorb the sunlight. So, that is not a good scenario. So, we do not want the dye molecule to aggregate in a particular place. The next thing is that the morphology, how does the dye molecule distributed over the surface and also the assembly on the TiO2 photoanode. We know that titanium dioxide photoanode is usually sintered at 450 degree Celsius to make it mesoporous structure. So, the objective behind making this mesoporous, it can absorb as much as dye molecule as possible. So, the dye molecule in principle should go beyond a certain distance from the surface. If the dye molecule is only absorbed only on the surface, so it is a monolayer adsorption. Then the amount of photon generated or the amount of charge carrier generated by the photon absorption is not as high because the dye adsorption is only limited to the surface of the semiconductor. In ideal case, it should also go inside the bulk of the material. So, how the dye molecule is distributed over the n-type semiconductor that also plays an important role. So, dye sensitized should fulfill the several requirement for the efficiency evolutions or the efficiency higher efficiency in DSSC devices. Their optical absorption should cover a large part of the visible spectrum and extended up to the NIR regions. So, it should have a large part in the visible spectrum and it should also extend in the NIR region they have high molar extinction coefficient. So, the amount of light absorption per unit length per unit mole of this dyes should also be very high. So, let us two different example. Let us say I have two different materials A and B. Both of this material has the same kind of semiconductor TiO2, but to different kind of dye. Let us say A 1 and B 1. Now, A 1 has a higher molecular absorption coefficient than B 1. So, obviously, I need a thinner layer of A 1 for the similar kind of light absorption like a B 1 and it will be material wise it is more inexpensive to have a material which absorbs more amount of sunlight in a thin layer and that is only possible if the absorption coefficient is high. So, in our particular example, we will choose A 1 because its molar absorption coefficient is high and probably if we make a layer of 100 nanometer, it will do the same job as like 200 nanometer or 300 nanometer of dye B 1 does the job. Their molecular structure should be characterized by peripheral anchoring groups 
typically of acidic nature which allow a firm adhesion to the semiconductor surface. So, this dye molecule should also be able to adhere to the TiO2 surface. Now, most of this dye which we choose that will be well anchored to the n type semiconducting oxide. The HOMO or the highest occupied molecular orbital of the photosensitizer should lie below the energy level of the redox mediator to promote dye, dye regeneration. So, you have to also make sure this dye get regenerated and that is why the highest orbital molecular orbital or highest occupied molecular orbital of the photosensitizer should be below the energy level of the redox mediator iodine triodide electrolytes to promote the dye regeneration. The excited state level of the dye sensitizer should be higher in energy than the conduction band age of the n-type semiconductor. So, that an efficient electron injection process from the excited dye into the conduction band of the semiconductor can occur. This point we already explained. So, what we mean that if this is the ground state of the dye and if this is the excited state of the dye. So, let us say this is the ground state and this is the excited state. G s stands for the ground state and E s stands for the excited state. Now, the excited state of the dye should always be higher than the conduction band of the titanium dioxide. So, that the electron can inject from the excited state to the conduction band. Next point is that the photosensitizer should feature high photostability to resist the continuous light soaking, thermal and electrochemical stability are also required. Well, what is the job of the photosensitizer to absorb the sunlight? and to maintain the job very well it has to absorb the light for a quite a long amount of time. So, we have to make sure that the material does not degrade or does not change its structural and optical properties upon exposure to the light for a long times. So, that is why photostability and as well as thermal and electrochemical stability is also very important while choosing the sensitizer molecule. Next point is that it should be stable enough to endure 108 turnovers corresponding to 20 years exposure to sunlight without apparent degradation. Of course, if we wanted to make a solar cell modules, then it has to be there for quite a long times. So, usually in industry we, in, we inspect it for a time period of 20 years. Now, this DSSC device should able to keep its efficiency or its turnover period for a time period of 20 years without the dye molecule showing any degradation. Because if the dye degrades, then the light absorption property will be hampered. If the light absorption property gets suffered, then the efficiency will also decrease. So, we do not want that situations to happen. Now, while designing a sensitizers, there are three types of dye materials are mainly used in this kind of solar cell. All the three dyes are ruthenium based metal organic complex with the general formula of RU, RU stands for ruthenium, LX LY prime SCNZ, where this LX and LY prime are porphyrin base compound porphyrinyl ligands. So, ruthenium Ru and LX and LY stands for the some porphyrin base ligands. These ligands are really available commercially and so excellent efficiency up to 11 percent. The chemical structure of these dyes are quite complex, they are metal dyes. So, ruthenium is at the center and the remaining components they surrounded at the ruthenium. Because of the complex chemical structure, the dyes are often known with their trivial names such as N3, whose full name is RUL prime, NCS3, red dye, the N749, RUL2, NCS3, black dye, and Z907. So, N3, N749, and Z907, these three dyes are commonly used for fabricating the DSSC devices they fulfill all the design criterion for an optimum sensitizers. The desirable properties of these dyes are to have a wide range of spectrum and have absorption coefficient. Normally, the dye absorbs up to 800 nanometer to 900 nanometer of the solar spectrum and absorption up to the infrared region 900 nanometer to 1000 nanometer is desirable to improve the efficiency. So, if we want to improve the efficiency, we want to have the absorption in the near IR range. Typically, the black dye shows wide absorption spectrum up to 900 nanometer. So, that is why nowadays the most of the emphasis is going on to synthesize this kind of black dyes for using in the DSSC devices. Efforts in the synthesis of the sensitizer for DSSCs can be grouped into two broad areas. The first is the functional ruthenium por porphyrin polypyridyl complex such as N3, N719, which is also used in the presence of the TBA like tetra butyl ammonium. Z907 and black dye and the second approach is metal free organic inorganic dye which we write as D 
slash A, donor accepted kind of dyes. The former class of compounds or the ruthenium based compounds, they contains expensive ruthenium metal and require careful synthesis and very tricky purification process. Now, ruthenium is very, very expensive, which makes this dye very, very costly. Also, at the same time, fabrication of these dyes are very, very cumbersome and it involves a lot of cost and purification steps. On the other hand, the second class, the metal free organic donor acceptor based dyes, they are prepared in rather inexpensive way. By following established design strategies, the major advantage of this metal free dyes are their tunable absorption and electrochemical properties through suitable molecular design. The high efficiency of the ruthenium polypyridyl DSSCs can be attributed to their wide absorption range from the visible to near IR region. High extinction coefficient for all organic donor accepted dyes can be achieved from the structure property relationship well known in dye chemistry. Now, obviously, when you design a new dye, we know its structure, but at the same time, we need to know its optical properties like its absorption properties. Now, in chemistry, it is very, very well known how to design an optimum structure property relationship. That means, like you know, any kind of structure we synthesize, at the same time, we have to keep in mind it shows a good optical properties, good absorption properties and its extinction, molar extinction coefficient also should be very high. Here we are showing the structure of the different dye as you can see here the ruthenium is at the center and the different other groups they are anchored or they are coordinated surrounding the ruthenium molecule. And you can see that there are CWH molecules at the end of this dye molecule. Now, the CWH molecule helps to anchor with the TiO2 surface. The second example is N719. In this case also we have ruthenium at the center and there are some other complex or other materials which is surrounded here and then finally, we have CWH and we use tertiary butyl aminopyridine which replace the H proton from the CH and make this a cationic dye and the CWH can also anchor on the TiO2 surface. The efficiency for an N3 dye is 11.3 percent and for N719 11.18 percent, but this efficiency number can be further improved by optimizing some of the parameters. Another common example used in the DSSC device is Z907. So, here again we have ruthenium at the center and we have CWH group at the end and some alkyl chain CNH19 on the two other end. So, this dye shows a moderate efficiency of 9.5 percent. On the other hand, the black dye which is again we use the ruthenium, but we have changed their structural properties so that they can absorb in the near IR range and their efficiency increased to 11.1 percent. A large number of artificial dye molecules have been synthesized since the first introduction of the dye sensitized solar cells and some of them have already successfully commercialized. For example, N3, N719 and Z907. These three dyes has already been commercialized and some people are already making solar panels using these three dyes. Desirable dye molecules have to meet certain criteria such as match with the solar spectrum. So, they should have a good absorption properties long term operational stability. So, that means, if I expose them to the sunlight for a quite a long time, they will not degrade over the time and firm graft on the semiconductor surface and those dye molecule will be able to anchor or adsorb on the n type semiconducting surface. In addition, the IR redox potential should be high enough to facilitate the regeneration reaction with a redox mediator and at the same time, whatever the dye molecule we will choose we have to choose the redox mediator accordingly because this will be an electron oxidation reduction reaction and finally, the dye has to be regenerated to its ground state so that this cycle can regenerate again and again. Just like the synthetic dye, we have also several natural dyes. Natural dyes are dyes or colorants derived from the plants, invertebrates or minerals. The majority of natural dyes are, are vegetable dyes and they are get from the plant sources. For example, roots, berries, bark, leaves and wood and also some biological sources like fungi and lichens. The replacement of organic dyes in DSSC with eco-friendly biodegradable and cost effective natural dyes opens up a new direction to the commercialization of this technology. Obviously, if we replace this uh, dye sensitized solar cell technology with an organic dye since it is biocompatible and also less inexpensive, it is also a less expensive then it will be also be good for the industry purpose. Natural dye extracts from the vegetables such as red turnip and pomegranate have been employed to obtain a power conversion efficiency of 1.7 percent and 1.5 percent. 
Now, the efficiency obtained from this natural dyes is not as high as the synthetic dye and there are reason behind it also. So, in most of this time this natural products comes with an isomer of several other products. So, let us say I have a good natural dye pomegranate, but at the same time there will be so many different isomeric form of one particular material along with the useful material. Now, in plant chemistry or in uh, natural chemistry it is very very difficult to extract one particular kind of useful isomer from the other. So, that is why the material is not very pure and due to this impurity sometimes the efficiency is not as high as the synthetic material. But if doing some method if you can extract only the particular kind of material then we can boost out this number. One of the most abundant and widespread group of natural pigments are anthrocyanins. They are natural dyes that are responsible for coloration of a large number of fruits, leaves and plants. Recently in a work we have showed that the anthrocyanin present in the Indian jamun fruit can also be used to fabricate solar cell and this kind of solar cells are popularly known as the jamun solar cell. So, the jamun which is a dark fruit which is also used for the anti cancer and different kind of anti tumor activity. So, that is full of this pigment called anthrocyanin. Now, anthrocyanin also has a good light absorption properties. We have explored this light absorption properties of the anthrocyanin to fabricate the disensitized solar cells. So, basically what we did we have dipped that TiO2 photoanode inside this anthrocyanin solution which was extracted chemically from the jamun fruit and overnight and then complete the DSSC device by putting some electrolyte solution and a platinum counter electrode and we got a reasonable efficiency and current from these devices. By further optimizations we can increase the efficiency of these solar cells and it will be a good alternative to the conventional method. A food pigment for example, monascus yellow extracted from the monascus fermentations red yeast rice has been studied as a novel sensitizing dye for dye sensitized solar cells. Cigegium cumini can be extracted from the jamun fruit and can be used as an effective sensitizing material for the fabrication of DSSC. The alcohol extract of the black rice, erythrin varigeta flower, rosa janthania flower and capsicum and kelp were obtained according to the following steps. The clean fresh of the black rice, erythrina varigeta flower, rosa janthia and capsicum and kelp were dried at 40 degree centigrade in a vacuum drying oven after crushed into a fraction lid. The raw materials were put into a 95 weight percent ethanol solution and kept in ambient temperature without exposing to direct sunlight for several weeks to extract the natural dye in the solution adequately. Solid residues were filtered out and the natural dye solutions were concentrated to one quarter with a rotary evaporator at 40 degree centigrade. Then finally, the natural dye solutions were refined by chromatogram method. After that this natural dye sensitizer alcohol solutions were prepared. So, then that photosensitizer or the photo anode was dipped in this natural dye sensitizer alcohol solution overnight and then they put the electrolyte solutions and counter electrode platinum counter electrode to complete the device architectures. So, the second important components in the dye sensitized solar cells devices is the electrolytes. The electrolyte solution is responsible for the dye regeneration and hole transport during DSSC device operation. Liquid electrolytes are the most investigated systems in DSSC field. So, as we mentioned in the last demonstration that we use iodine triiodide as a liquid electrolyte for this regeneration process. They are basically composed of three main elements a solvent. In the case of iodine triiodide we use acetonitrile as a solvent, a redox mediator, ionic conductor and various additives. The additives are used to increase the conductivity. For example, one can use popularly tertiary butyl pyridine an additive which is used to increase the conductivity. The electrolyte solvent must meet certain requirements such as melting point below minus 20 degree Celsius and boiling point above 100 degree Celsius. The reduce loss by means of evaporation chemical and photochemical stability, high dielectric constant to allow solubilizations of the electrolyte salts and low viscosity to promote high diffusion coefficient of the redox mediator. So, we need a high dielectric constant value for the redox mediator because high dielectric constant implies the solubility, the polarizability is high. If the polarizability is high then the solubility of this material will also be high. At the same time the viscosity of this material should be low so that we can make an ideal solution and the diffusion coefficient should be optimum. Several organic solvents have been used for the electrolyte solution including ethanol, 
acetonitrile, organic nitriles and carbonates. Acetonitrile is considered the best solvent for fundamental studies for maximizing the cell efficiency, but it is not ideal for the stability of the devices. Solvent based on ionic liquids and particularly on imidazole salts have been widely studied as well. They process a high chemical and electrochemical stability, an excellent ionic conductivity and a very low vapor pressure which reduce solvent evaporation and leakage. So, this iodine triiodide electrolytes that are volatiles and corrosives. So, we do not want a volatile and corrosive system. So, that is why people have tried imidazole salts. So, not only imidazole salts, people have tried different other kind of ionic mediums and ionic liquids even to make this kind of electrolyte solutions. In today's lectures, we have learned so far about how to choose a good sensitizers or the dye molecule and we give a just a overview or the basic introduction to the electrolyte solutions. In the next lecture, we will study in details about what are the different varieties of the electrolytes, how to fabricate electrolytes and how an electrolyte is used in a DSSC device. Thank you very much.